Here we go. Mr. Eric Brandt walks into the door, into the vestibule, and he's being challenged just for walking into the public the area. District Attorney's Office Discovery Department. Oh, they're videotaping Miss Karen. Miss Karen, we're exercising our full rights, ma'am. Thank you. Can I have your name, please, ma'am? Mary? I want your I badge can't, number. I can't read the... We're not going to come in oh, there. Thank you. It's a very long name. I can't read it. Karen. Karen. It's like a 10 point font on that name tag. <laughs> I think it, it starts with a D. Maybe it's Dingle Fritz. Yeah. Well, hey, she's saying Karen. She ain't saying Mary. <laughs> she's saying Karen. We walk into the vestibule and get in challenge. Yeah. What authority she, she do you have you to keep me out of here, a public entrance? There. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I will stand right here and film all day now. We're not coming in. We're allowed to film the entrance. Did you hear him? He's explaining to him. We're allowed to film it. Good morning. Good morning, folks. I never had Hear these uh, faithful servants of our community. Those would be all prostituting attorneys. Yes, prostituting attorneys going out the door. Yeah, aren't they wonderful? And her name's Karen. She's calling the popo. She's, not letting me read her name She's on the phone. Oh, you can't actually pull the door shut. Yeah. Not even going in there. No, we're that. not even attempting to go in. This is hilarious. I cannot. Read are that you? Name are you threatened, Karen? Like, get away from the window. What? If I'm here to get public records access, there's no reason for her to be observant or, or abusive to us. That's abusive. We just walked in. That's not her job. Her job is to protect inside those doors, sir, of which we pay for all of them. I don't care what you say. I have a right to be here. I come in to get... It doesn't matter. It has nothing to do with you. Thank you very much. No, I won't. What's your name and badge number? You spouting off directives. If you're servant. Me around, you should at least give me your Yeah, name. give me your name, servant. We'll just call you Fuckleberry. Call your backups, because we ain't threatening nobody. Is this the district attorney's office? This is a public facility. We own it. Yeah, we do. We're the taxpayers of El Paso County, dipshit. It says right there, the sign says, Board of Judicial District Attorney's Office. It is a county paid for building. We have right to access. And this is a public access. Good morning, Good morning. sir. Good morning, man. How are you? Good, yeah. Yeah, we were doing well until we got threatened to coming in the vestibule here trying to get some information. We weren't even allowed to ask for information before we were told to get out. Uh, it's not your problem, brother. It's just the office you represent. Your last name. Karen. All I'm hearing is Karen. Aren't you? Isn't that all you're hearing is Karen? Because she's still whining on the radio. She's like, up her name badge, you're so violating our rights. Do you know that, ma'am? Do you know that you're violating our rights right now? No, you're threatening us. You make calls. You're trying to get back yeah, up. You seem awfully triggered to me. Yeah. And all we did is walk in to observe. Wow. You see what's on my back? It's called press. I'm allowed to be here. Thank you very much. So this is definitely... Now you just problem. violated my First Amendment right. Robert L. Russell. Robert L. Russell served as the 4th Judicial District Attorney for El Paso... And Nothing Colorado like triggering, folks. ...from 1965 to 1985. Mr. Russell provided dynamic leadership in the prosecution of criminal cases. His greatest contribution was in the role of a professional prosecutor. Prosecutor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he you heard that, that again. Yeah. Professional. His what? greatest contribution was in the role of a professional prostitutor. Yeah, he served as a mentor and a tutor to generations of prostitutors and attorneys, who later distinguished themselves in positions as U.S. congressmen, U.S. attorney, Colorado attorney general, state senators and legislators, federal, state, and municipal judges, county commissioners. Oops, I shouldn't have done that. Now I can't read because I covered it up with comments. <laughs> County commissioners, 
mayor and city council members, district attorneys, and prominent private practitioners, as well as presidents and chief executive officers of various national organizations and private corporations, including the U.S. Olympic Committee and the L. You mean the Pedophile Palmer Foundation. Committee? The Pedophile Committee, right. <laughs> that's, what the, that's what the Olympics is <laughs> turned into. This is awfully into. wordy for the, right? Yeah. Very wordy. It's a nice little plaque. Yeah, it's a great little plaque. A oh, it's, I like down green. here too, the Sex Offenders Program. <laughs> <laughs> he established that one, was too. Was he related to the Clintons? Yeah, I know. That's what I was just going to wonder. Because <laughs> every time period, you see that, you know they're, they're involved with him. Right. <laughs> During this period, Mr. Russell's office pioneered the prostitution of crimes involving child abuse, <laughs> child support, welfare fraud, and juvenile cases. Many of his child programs, sex trafficking. Yeah, sounds like it. Many of his programs became nationally recognized. Yep, there yep. you go. Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, Jeffrey uh, Epstein. Jeff, Jeffrey Epstein. Oops, now what am I got Oops, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Hi, Eric. Greetings. <laughs> <laughs> Who's <laughs> God? Oh, look, here we go. Now they got a sergeant. Many of his programs are nationally what's going on over your right shoulder. and are still models today. His <laughs> office developed the Child Support Division, Welfare Fraud Unit, and the nation's first juvenile diversion program. He is a, was a leader in the community for the prostitution of domestic violence and promoted the first safe house. He established a sex offenders program. I'm sure we had sex offenders long before that. I'm um, sure. Yeah. He established a sex offenders program Chins Up and Shape Up programs, and the Neighborhood Justice Center. He implemented several major changes in Colorado criminal prosecution, including his appointment of the first... I've lost my line here. Of the first... Of the um, first changes in Colorado criminal prostitution, including his appointment of the first woman dep deputy district attorney boy, to handle fem felony criminal trials. Involved. Yeah. He also was instrumental in the establishment of the Colorado District Attorney Council, Metro Vice and Narcotics Unit, District Attorney Investigative Unit, Check Fraud Unit, and Economic Crime Division. It's hard to hold this up there at the high. During this period, oh, thank you. Mr. Russell provided dynamic leadership following, following significant U.S. Supreme Court decisions such as Miranda that significantly changed evidence gathering by law enforcement. This was a time of turmoil and change in the area of prosecution. Mr. Prostitution. Russell, prostitution, my bad. Mr. Russell was a stable influence that led to the development of the first significant training program for law enforcement. Oh, now, really? And then now, they, that is important. Well, and then they, then they adopted the, Israel's training for it. Well, it's important That's that the, law enforcement be trained, particularly since they lost qualified immunity. Absolutely. So maybe they're going to be His leadership and that. membership is a, as a wise and faithful teacher, guide, and friend have left a lasting imprint on generations of attorneys and this community. And that's that's fantastic. Yes. That's, that, I didn't know that about Robert L. Russell. So it looks like they dedicated this in 2006, huh? Mm hmm Outstanding. El Paso County Grade Seal and part of the state of Colorado. Robert L. Russell. Yes. Yeah. Oh, hi. How you been? Hey. How you doing? I'm doing great. How you guys doing? Oh, we're doing great. Doing great. Right. How are you? Mm -hmm. Good. Good. How Troy are you? Fritchie. What's your name? Fritz? Troy Fritchie. Fritchie. Yeah. Good to meet you. Sergeant Troy Fritchie. Yes, sir. I believe I I've met you once before. You have. have. I've been a while. Yeah. How you been? I've been great. How are hey, you? I'm yeah. doing okay. Well, I, I heard that there were some local people that were doing a general education campaign today for jury nullification. And considering that I'm that guy and the people in the state of Colorado versus Eric Brandt, I thought I'd come right. down and support there you, you in the morning. There you go. So, <laughs> what's the jury nullification about? Oh, jury nullification is a concept, it's a power that jurors have to find a defendant not guilty even when the prostitution has fully met their burden of proof because they feel that something about the case or the law itself is unjust. For example, uh, <laughs> juries in the North refused to convict fugitive slaves despite the law of the Fugitive Slave Act, and ultimately prosecution stopped prosecuting those cases. It's too expensive. Right. Why would they go through all that expense? If, uh, if they're not gonna get a conviction. And so eventually the law went away. And another notable time period was the prohibition era. era. Even fewer people were convicted of prohibition violations than the Fugitive Slave Act. 
And so that was instrumental in finally repealing the prohibition. Act. Didn't back then they just pretty much pour out their liquor? <laughs> Instead of no, people them. were arrested. Well, uh, right. but but nobody but jurors was, would not convict. Right. And and then the next major period of time where jury nullification became very important was during the civil rights era. Mm -hmm. um, as I'm sure you know, Woolworths was a private company. Right. So uh, they, there are a lot of people that did not, in fact, have permission and, in fact, broke the law to sit down at Woolworths counters, that broke the law to, by not getting permits to demonstrate in the street. And the, the largest majority of the civil rights arrests resulted in acquittals through jury nullification. And at the end of the day, is it a law if the citizenry don't believe it's against the law? That's right. exactly what, it, what the point is. And that's so, the whole point of jury nullification. Our argument is jury nullification should be included in the jury instructions yes. and let them decide at the beginning of whether that's a possibility no different than acquittal hung jury or anything like that that should be the, a part of the instruction packet mm. and that's instead true. the judges instead will will work their way around even letting the jury know that that's a possibility right yeah the, and that's not fair to the general public or anything because if I'm being tried by my peers knowledge is power so I want right. the jury to be empowered with everything every tool that they can possibly have right, right and it's unfair to a defendant to not be able to express that to the jury and a lot of times your judges will not allow that but they'll allow prosecutions prosecutors allow all kinds of asinine motions but right. they will deny the motion to instruct the jury nullification it's not fair to the defendant, and that's what we're, our fight is, to get it on a legislative ballot to where it's included in the normal jury nullification. It's a one-page deal. And no as different a matter of fact, one state in the union in 2014 passed a law, uh, passed a constitutional amendment, and that would be New Hampshire. So in New Hampshire, jurors, of uh, course, are actually obligated to inform jurors that they have the right to nullify both the law as well as the facts. Whereas in Colorado, the judge will expressly tell the jurors that their job is to judge the facts and that they must follow the law that he gives them. Pretty interesting. Where yeah. can I find that info? Uh, you can go to the Fully Informed Jury Association. That's fija.org. Okay. Um, and and the, the folks that are out here today happen to be handing out the exact same flyer information that I was arrested for handing out in Denver. Uh, and that's the case that went to the Supreme Court last year. And the only so, issue you're called out here on right now is we walked in and the lady oh, started the throwing out. directives and threats and we didn't even attempt to go in that okay. door. Yeah, he was yeah. going to look around and obviously we're on camera right. and we walk yeah, in. Right. That, that's implied consent and I don't remember telling you guys could right. do that. So I mean we're exercising our rights and she just flew off the handle order and directives. Thank you, sir. You handled this very well. My name is Patrick Partridge. You already know, obviously, who this famous guy is. But we're, one thing I want to let you know, man, these guys with cameras, one, one thing, these guys with cameras are not against you. We're against the bad policies and the bad practices of some among you. Do you understand? And then once we expose that, we work together, we can clean up our streets together. And that's the whole point. Right. You know, we're not against you, and that's we keep hearing that. We're trying to start trouble with you guys and this and that. We're not. Right. We're basically, we want to observe. Right. We want to make sure everything is done right, whether it's against the defendant mm -hmm. or against you. Because sometimes our backup is used to back you guys up. Right. Because a lot of police officers don't have those. Right. Yeah. You know, and, and, and then they, they right want they want our coverage. Right into your, uh, and your, then they your want your our yeah. footage yeah. in order to well, exonerate the police officer. So interestingly enough, I have a couple jurisdictions that I have lawsuits with uh -huh. that have said that they're going to wait until the full three years because they think it's too expensive. So I've informed their attorneys that we're not going to be settling for uh, three it years. Is, it is expensive. Yeah. Well, really well especially incorporating them into uniforms and everything. Cams, right. So. Right. Well, no, I, I think I think body cams are an extremely useful tool, mm -hmm. um, and not for one sided. You know, it, right. it, it shows. It shows everything that has occurred that is in view. Well, you, the perfect you know? example of like the dash cam use with the Detroit shooting just that happened. The gentleman run up on the police pulling the gun. And I had the, the dash cam not caught that, that would have went off in the media sure. as a bad kill on you guys' sure. part. Sure. Okay. Right. But the dash cam actually saw the guy running up, shooting. The cop tackled him, and he was still trying to shoot over the cop's shoulder. I mean, that was a good kill, and I hate using that vernacular, yeah. but you see so many so many accounts that they're not good. 
you know, you hear the automatically the cops say, I'm scared, I feared for my life. To me, that should not be a word in you guys' vocabulary. To me, you guys wow. are the community superheroes. Wow. And if you're scared, there's help for that. But wow. you shouldn't be carrying a badge and a gun. The problem is that you're not scared. There's a certain I, element I, of fear. I, I There's a certain that. element of fear. Is that. my point. There's a certain element of fear, but never use that as an excuse for taking another man's life. Well, it's especially when he's running away from you. There's yeah. no threat when he's yeah. running that away was from right you. Right here in Colorado Springs. That's my point. Yeah. Right. You know, and, and, and that's all we always so hear right. is we got unarmed innocent people getting shot, and the first thing the officer cracks is, "I feared for my life." That's, I don't know, you guys are armed, you guys are bulletproof, you guys are more protected than the citizenry, and we depend on you to protect us. And if you guys are scared, where does that put us? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, is that, do you understand, is that a good point? Is, yeah. is I, that I, a good I point? I her name tag and she won't give me her name. So I've done this Officer Duderstack. Duterstat. Duterstat. Yeah, he said it was a big long yeah, name. Big, long name that starts with All right, yeah, I didn't Thank you, man. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. Morning. Have Good morning. a truck to day, everyone. Twice on Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Thank you, bud. I might have one of my cars left. I want a button. You want a button? I'm out of buttons. I'm completely out of buttons. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just spent seven months in jail for saying fuck the police. You see his nice little jewelry you yeah. wear. Oh, I wear my scarlet letter hey, what proudly. Do you have two? 